All right, well, Appysack, Tom Appysack, I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, sorry, dude. You're probably not watching this, but sorry. Anyway, um, he leaks a lot of information on Twitter. One thing that he grabs a lot of is when GPUs that haven't actually released yet upload their benchmark results, because obviously some people are testing these out as engineering samples and such and whatever. They get tested well before they actually launch, and sometimes they get tested on, on a uh, benchmark that then has the results upload to a database that people can search. And so oftentimes we can get a rough idea of what's going on with GPUs before we're supposed to, right? And that's what's going on here. Now, this is the uh, SI software, CSoft, I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce this, uh, official benchmarker. And this does a variety of calculations for floating point operations. We've got half float, single float, double float, and quad float. And what's interesting here is we're actually seeing this both from uh, an A380 and an A370M. Notice the M on that. Now, our understanding of these two GPUs from Intel, from their Arc Alchemist series, which should be coming out in quarter one, is that these are both based on the 128 execution unit model, uh, which again is the most cut down model. The difference between these two is that the A380 should be a desktop chip. The A370M has an M on it. That's probably gonna be our mobile chip. Uh, which would be, you know, clocked lower, lower power draw, those kinds of things, which would explain the reduced performance because we do see uh, a, a sizable performance dip here. Now, people have been commenting on the um, some of the weird things that show up here, like, wait, 160 compute units? Uh, that's likely the, uh, according to Appysack here, and I would agree, an issue where it's taking into account the integrated graphics chip that was also there and it's including those execution units in the results. So that's why we see some weird things uh, on this. Now, uh, various people, I don't know a lot about this benchmark, but a lot of people have compared these results to the 1650 and 1650 Super, which would give you a, a similar difference in performance here. Now, it's very important to point out that these are synthetic benchmarks. These are not gaming benchmarks. So we cannot just say that these will give this exact gaming performance. But with that being said, let me remind you where this falls. This does put uh, you know, the lower end one around a 1650. You can see some similar graphics cards here on this relative performance chart from Tech Power Up. And then the stronger version may be up there closer to like a 1650 Super. Maybe not quite there, but we're kind of in this ballpark. And so maybe we're in like GTX 1060 territory. Honestly, if this is the lowest end chip and that is the kind of gaming performance we get, again, this wasn't necessarily gaming performance. If that's their lowest end chip and it's actually cheap, question mark, what's the market gonna be like when these actually launch, who knows? But if it's actually cheap and gives this kind of performance, that would be really good to see because um, that is better, especially if it's not gonna be hampered by weird issues like the 6500 XT or something is. Um, I don't know, I'd love to see another lower end chip in this space. Fantastic. And again, this lines up perfectly with the other benchmark that I reported on a while back. You could watch that video where we saw the higher end, the 512 execution unit um, version show up in this same benchmark. And it was giving uh, scores that competed with the 3070 and 3070 Ti. And I used that to divide by four and then get us down to this 1650 ballpark. So this is all very consistent with what I was expecting given that other benchmark. So it looks like they will most likely be having a low end product in the 1650 to 1650 super range. Um, and then you would expect a doubling of that performance for their 256 execution unit. Um, which would put you up into this territory around a 2060 type of performance, this ballpark. Again, these are ballpark figures. And then again, you would expect like a times four performance, putting you up, up here around the 3070 or 3070 Ti. Now, again, this is all very ballpark because, um, you know, these are, this is not a gaming benchmark. These are most likely not on like finalized drivers. So, you know, we can only see so much, but this is all just confirming uh, some things we were already expecting. If you want more of my thoughts on this, you could take a look at the video I did recently. Uh, just more of my full thoughts on the Arc Alchemist lineup and what we're expecting from those. One more thing on this topic, it does look like uh, from video cards, 
we've seen another look at uh, the actual card designs themselves coming from Intel. And I've got to say, I like the look of this better than the ones that we saw previously, um, which looked a little bit more silvery. These are from uh, Moore's Law is Dead. These are some kind of older, older leaks. And then these newer ones, again, to me, uh, I don't know. I think it looks fine. We'll see what uh, maybe, you know, AIB models actually look like anyway. I'll link all my sources in the, in the description, by the way. Anyway, we've got a little bit of an update to another GPU news topic, uh, more AMD related. So one thing is there's been some speculation on the process node that RDNA 3, right? So the AMD, we'd most likely expect them to be called 7,000 series GPUs that we expect to at, at least get some of them by the end of 2022, um, as I reported on yesterday, I think it was. But what, um, what we're seeing here is from uh, this Blues Violet on Twitter, a LinkedIn post from somebody who works at AMD saying a project listed as Navi 31, which is the top end RDNA 3 chip, and it's listed as a combination of 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer. Navi 32 also listed as 5 nanometer, 6 nanometer. And Navi 33 listed as 6 nanometer. Okay? So, with that in mind, uh, that does confirm stuff that we've seen leaked before, which is uh, that we expect to see a mixture of 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer technology on these RDNA 3 GPUs. Although it looks like the Navi 33 is just 6 nanometer, which again, the RDNA 2 lineup is 7 nanometer. So that also means that they're, they, you know, it's on a different node. So it's not competing for space on that exact same node. So I'm also curious if we would still see production of the 6000 series cards on that 7 nanometer node as these ones come into production. Now they'd still be competing for some certain materials that have been in short supply, like substrates and all of that, and memory modules and you know whatnot. But anyway, um, although actually come to think of it, I don't know if they'd use the exact same memory modules. Maybe they'd use a, a different one. Um, anyway, also on more AMD news, update to a video we saw recently where Graymon, who is a very reliable leaker of information on GPUs, um, was saying that we'd expect the 6x50 units, right? These slightly beefed up uh, RX 6000 series lineup uh, coming in June through July. But Cortex, who also tends to have some good info, uh, is saying that it's probably coming in mid-April, so even sooner. But to his knowledge, there's no plan for anything other than a 6950 XT. So now what I'm actually wondering is, I guess I didn't really need to click on that, but anyway, what I'm kind of wondering is if this is actually designed to compete with the 3090 Ti. Maybe AMD just wants to, you know, keep fighting there. If there's a 3090 Ti, maybe we throw in our 6950 XT. And if you guys aren't in the loop, the basic uh, idea here was that these will just stay on the seven nanometer process. It's really just gonna be a memory speed bump um, from, from most of what we've seen here, which could get it some you know better uh, performance for sure. And we're seeing this confirmed from Moore's Law is Dead, who tends to have his own insider sources, which do seem to know a lot about AMD. Um, and he's saying he can 100% confirm that the 6950 XT, and he's saying 6850 and 6750 XTs are still on the seven nanometer node. So I don't know if that, I, I, he's confirming here that they're on the seven nanometer node. I don't know if he's also claiming that he's confirming there's a 68 and 67 version of these, because again, that does conflict with Cortex, although Cortex wasn't saying that there isn't those versions. He's saying that he doesn't know of them, right? So I don't know. Anyway, so Moore's Law is Dead is expecting it to be a better product than the 3090 Ti, although, I, you know, my opinion is that he tends to be very AMD-centric, and it, I mean, sure, if you completely ignore ray tracing and DLSS, fine. It will probably be a, a faster card at 1080p and 1440p rasterized performance, for sure. Um, well, maybe not for sure, but I, I would not at all be surprising and he's still thinking that you could get a 10% boost out of all that. Again, I don't need to keep clicking on those links. Anyway, um, I think that's what I've got for you today on the GPU news. I'm also putting out my um, Dying Light 2 videos, so I don't know when YouTube will serve this up, but I've tested out my 1060 RX 6600 and 6800 XT in Dying Light 2. Um, so, hey, might take a look at those as well, and I hope you have an excellent day.